Hello everyone, welcome back to Pod Squad episode 2. Uh, we're your hosts, I'm Zaino. I'm Dylan. Yeah, and uh, today we're just gonna be rambling about random shit. Um, I mean, like, that's what we normally do, right? Yeah, it's just it's just rambling about random shit, right? Yeah. I know, I don't even know what we're... <laughs> and, um, actually, um, before we start, I, there is something quick. Uh, we are going to do a special, special interview with uh, the SRC Ultimo. Um, Very special. I am currently in the... As when this episode is being released, I am in the middle of, of editing that hour long special. <sighs> yeah. So, um, luckily, luckily, my computer can handle it. It's fine, but I am crying. I am crying. Well, what fine. we will say is that it's, it's, um, it was, it was quite the chat. <laughs> it, it was quite the chat. <laughs> it was quite the chat. It wasn't long enough. Um, it, it, honestly, yeah. it was not long enough. I honestly felt like it could have gone for longer. Um, oh yeah, I mean, like between the four of us, we could probably have like talked for days on end. Yeah, no, no, it's actually yeah, it's actually funny how we can. <laughs> um, not to give any spoilers, but we'll probably like tease some tease some um stuff. So that some stuff, yeah. yeah, on Instagram, on Discord, whatever, eh, uh, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, some. We'll we'll do it somewhere. Yeah. But um, I'll just say one word that summarized the entire experience. Mushrooms. mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yes. That, yeah. You read my mind. You read yeah. my mind. That was good. Alrighty. Well, we'll just get right into it, shall we? Um. Yeah. For can I can I do a little? I know you want you want to do a little bit of. Uh, Dude, talking go with go D&D. do your spiel. I want to do. do a, I want to do a small flex. I got a medal. <laughs> uh. I got <laughs> I got a medal. Um. Yeah. From for being for working at the MIQ from April two uh, April two thousand twenty to April two thousand and twenty two. So for for anyone who's like an international listener, I don't know if we do, but like for anyone who is, we do actually. That's oh, funny. We do. We have shout out to that person. Um, hang on, I'm just from gonna quickly go somewhere to in India. So- oh, really? Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's actually quite funny. That's surprising. I know. I want to. I want to know. Like, whoever you are, please reach out. Okay, so out of um uh previous place six percent is from india punjab wow yeah i have i have the stats here so it's actually crazy um spotify 53 percent apple Podcasts 35 percent sweet which is much more than web browser um Uh, yeah yeah but anyway uh what was i saying oh yeah yeah so if if any of you are international listeners and who are watching this podcast right now um just to give some context and miq as Zaino was is mentioning, is basically like you know our isolation facility for you know everything that's currently happening right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't want to don't want to like you know say anything so that it like jukes the algorithm or anything. No but, no no, um, no. Yeah no. Um, carry on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it has come. It's it's two long years of working basically at a. At a, at, hotel. Like, at a hotel that there, there there's been a lot of like um restrictions in place yeah that which is actually quite funny because when we do have like outbreaks in new zealand um everyone says miq is the safest place where you can be which is actually not too far Entire. from the truth yeah not too far from the truth be- only because at miq obviously there are a lot of restrictions on place like social distancing having like wearing PPE all the time um it's just crazy so it's like yeah so obviously um you're going to be well protected and out there right now on Queen Street no one's wearing a mask I mean little, well, to, no, I mean, little to no one little to no one yeah, yeah. And so there are some there are some reasonable people but <laughs> yeah I mean with with what we currently have right now it's kind of just like you know indoors it's encouraged outdoors it's like eh. Do you do you really need to? I mean, but like at the same time, I still wear my mask outside. Yeah, like I wear my mask outside all the time. Yeah, like it's just good to be safe, eh? Yeah, but I mean, I personally, I had a little bit of a COVID scare, uh, a couple of, oh, a couple. Of yeah, weeks you did tell me about it. Tell yeah, me at least. Tell I, tell. I probably just juke the system, but don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. So like, uh, I went to a sort of a meetup with um a bunch of guys. I have i had no idea who they were yeah. like i've heard their names on twitch so um a bit of background on my end uh, i'm a twitch streamer um in my spare time yeah follow follow his tw- uh twitch i'm not people. gonna i'm not gonna shout it out right here but uh what i will <laughs> say is that like no. um yeah like we, we did this whole like meetup and stuff at um a local bar called archie brothers circus um circus electric 
um, at I a bar. It's really yeah, uh, it's Not basically a like a bar and arcade mixed together. Like in the daytime, it's a like a proper arcade that yeah. kids can go in and like play the games and stuff. Yeah. But uh, after a certain time, like I think it's six o'clock, it goes into R18, which means you know obviously only adults can actually enter in and like you know buy drinks and Damn. Um, play on the games and, and stuff like that. It's it's a really fun time. Um, but honestly, I don't really know the entirety of the situation, but it seems like uh, you know somebody at that place got COVID, uh, which then passed on to somebody into our group, which then logged our like ev- pretty much everybody's like contact tracing app, being like, oh hey, you're a close contact, monitor your health for like ten days, and like that was that was a big scare. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, like I mean. <sighs> Honestly, I don't feel symptoms or anything. I, That's good. That's there, there, good. <laughs> I don't know how slim of a chance it is to be asymptomatic in this case, but like, you know... I mean, it's different for everyone, isn't it? It is. It like, is. Like, like, you hear stories like, oh, I, I, I was... I was like, I read on the news several times, like, um, that, the per- that, you know, someone was sitting right next to each other, like, um, during... Uh, for as co-workers yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they, they never catch COVID I mean then Skylar and, um, like she she told me that um she went off with with several people here yeah. to a bar and that that person ended up having COVID but she's she doesn't have COVID yeah and, so, and like, she was like sitting right across from that person as well exactly. which is like really you know that's yeah exactly so I guess it's different for everyone. Yeah. Like they did say, like the reason why you wouldn't have catch uh, caught COVID yet was because um you just have a stronger immune system, so you know yeah. it's just flex on everyone, right? And I mean, like <laughs> what everyone's been boosted. At, like majority of the people on the campus that we're currently filming this on, yeah, is like what it is boosted, yeah. at least. Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah. I think I think it should be fine. It should be fine. It I mean, fine. I mean, again. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I want to catch COVID and get it over with. But the idea is, if you catch you COVID, don't. <laughs> yeah, you you don't get over it because you can easily catch it again. Yeah. Right. I mean, yes, you have. It's not like a you you have a less like you have a less likely chance of catching COVID within the three month period of you having gotten COVID. Yeah. But then after that, you're just as likely as anyone else to get it. Mm. So I was like, okay, well. Anyway, wait. back to the back to the middle. Can I say? Wait, um, ready. Oh, I I hate that so much, and like I'm not even listening through the the, the microphone that he's doing it on. So wait, so this this metal is it like? Oh wow! Okay, is it nice. actually like certified by this the, is, the this government, is, or yeah, is it this like is given by the government? Oh, okay. So it is. It's, it's like a legitimate government thing, right? Okay. I was not expecting this. I'll be honest. Can I put it on? Well, I mean, considering. Wow, oh, this is a heft. Is this? Wait. Proper metal. Yeah, sounds like it. Do you want to hear it? I, mean, I can hear it from here. It, it sounds like proper metal to me. Yeah, that is hefty. Yeah, but I mean that's that's that is very surprising. Like I I guess like I mean it's not really you know on the same level as like you know getting a medal of honor or whatever. Oh no right? no it's not. But I mean but, like for being a frontline worker, it, it, it you have to get recognized somehow. I guess. Yeah, I mean honestly. I'm not even joking. At the end of um, the MI, I literally thought to myself, like, a few months when we, before we were coming to an end. Um, I didn't even know we were coming to an end um, by April, but um, when, yeah, before, before a few months before that, mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, oh, it would be nice to literally just do an Instagram post and just say thank you to all the people, who so, uh, uh, to, to the person who have supported me and to everyone else, like my, my coworkers and all that. Which you did. Which I did, and I thought that would be the end of it. And then I got a text from my, from my boss, mm-hmm. or Xbox. He was just like, "Oh yeah, uh, there's a medal waiting for you. Come, 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 come by and grab it." And I'm like, "Okay." What? So <laughs> I know. So I was surprised, that, but I'll just like hang it in my room or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, it's a good memento of like uh, uh, an experience that I don't think many people will get to experience. The um. And it's an experience that I don't want anyone else to, to experience. Really? Is it? Was it's, it that bad? It's terrible. It's terrible. Being in a hospitality is bad enough, and then times that by ten. That's like being in an MIQ. Right. Because okay. Everyone 
thinks they're going into a hotel. Yes, they are going to a hotel, but we have to. It's not set up in the same way as a hotel exactly. where you can just like order anything and everything. Seriously, that you I'm want not even joking. Time. Some people have called reception and we're like, "Oh, is housekeeping gonna come and clean our room?" <laughs> Bitch, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you might have COVID, man. Yeah, we don't know that. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, like, the, the tests will speak for Yeah, it, exactly. Like... The tests will speak for it. And this is literally when they first arrived in. I'm like, what kind of... And then they're like, oh, we already made a mess. I'm like, bro, how do you manage to you make a... You clean that yourself, don't Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, if you go to another hotel, which is not at MyQ, then yeah, obviously, they'll clean it for you. But yeah. but still, even even if that's the case, you don't make a mess intentionally. Well, yeah, I mean, like, if anything... You still be like, mindful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess this is, like, early, what? This is, well, not to explicitly, like, say what it is, but variant 2, I think. Or at least, like, variant 1, variant 2, not variant 3. No, 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 this, 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 this carried on for the entire two years I was working there. Oh, really? Okay. People who are literally coming in, literally, like, when we, um, January around... And just Jan- thinking that it's, like, a standard hotel, Which I'm like, at, which at that, okay, when we first start... F- fine, fair enough. It's new to everyone. Yeah. But when you were two years in, it's like it's really? like oh, okay, come on, like you know the system. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's on the news. The words should be engraved in your mind. Literally, every other almost every, every other country single is document doing it. you should have signed before you even came into the country should have exactly. like, explicitly said, okay, this is what's going to happen, and this is the the process right? that you're going to go through. Exactly. You think so, but eh, no. Yes. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just funny, like. Someone even made a small documentary <laughs> on YouTube, like a small vlog, starting from like literally when they um flew into the country, did a whole MIQ thing. Yeah. And um and it was and it was shared within Ridges because that was that was like where they were staying. Um it was so funny to see. I mean, a lot of a lot of people have done the same concept on TikTok as well. Like they did daily updates saying, "Oh, this is what I got for dinner on day five of isolation." Yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, showcasing at least as much as they can from the inside of you know those facilities that they currently have exactly, operating. exactly. Like, are there are there any facilities still operating today? Um, there is the M Social, right? That, that I know because they aren't they using it for like. Visa, I don't know. Visa don't, holders or something. I don't know. I know because um, citizens and permanent residents. Per, um, if you they have residents, go straight home and then isolate for the ten days. And oh, you don't even need to isolate, at oh. all, right? For for citizens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you like, just, still monitor the health. Before, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah before yeah. you really do anything drastic, Half people right? won't. People, you know, people won't be doing that. No, 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 no. <laughs> but that is what the government has said. But no one ever listens because, oh, ugh. yeah, <laughs> you think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's the uh, MIQ experience for me. Holy shit. Yeah. It is something. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's hospitality for you. <sighs> Gosh. I know, I know, like, um, there are, uh, there, there are a lot of people that I know who work in hospitality. Yeah. Well, mainly because my coworkers <laughs> work in hospitality. Mm-hmm. It's like, it is the worst, one of the worst industries to go in. Like, you work twice as hard, but get less pay. You know, we get mm. minimum wage and stuff like that. Even, even, I'm not going to say how much I got paid, but even working in MIQ, I didn't get paid that much. It was, but yeah. Mm. It was, it was like, it was like the bare minimum, you yeah. could say. So yeah. it was like. I mean, like for me, I, funny. I haven't had the like, I, I, I want to say that I've had a proper job, but like my mentality is still in the sense of like, you know, money is money. Like I'll take mm. whatever I can get. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. guess once I, once I personally go into like a long term job and like realize that i'm getting underpaid then it get, then it hits and it's just like oh shit yeah that, that <laughs> yeah i guess that's something that's uh talk quite a lot like yeah you need to like you need to know how much that that's what my lecturers always say to me you need to know how much you're worth right oh yeah, yeah. you can't get like if you especially like obviously if you're going to a job like contract or like full-time employment or something then obviously they have to pay you minimum like mi- at least minimum wage that's like <laughs> by law yeah. but I guess if you're going like com- if you're doing commissions and stuff mm. you don't you try not to you try not to obviously don't try to overcharge but don't try to like undercharge under- either undercharge either because yeah. like if you know you're uh, if, you, if you know like you're, if you're doing photography right and your current rate is $30 an hour yeah. then start from $30 an hour don't go be like oh yeah I'll make it special for you for $20 like 
No, but then, I mean, then well, you can, but like, yeah, but like, if you're trying to be like, it's, it's very, it's very rare circumstances that you will. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you do I for like a best friend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I do that for what I do because, like, yeah, yeah. on on the side of doing like you know my studies as well as Twitch streaming and whatnot, I I also do photography at uh, conventions, mm. right? Right, and, right, right. Um, like I have that fixed hourly rate of like you know thirty dollars an hour, right? Yeah. Uh, with obviously you know added costs if anything right yeah yeah yeah. for like travel and whatnot but if it's like somebody that i genuinely like know uh, like a friend or whatever like i i'm happy to bump the rate down by 10 bucks if anything yeah yeah yeah, because i mean uh, but even then like the i guess the industry that i'm photographing like doing photos for not photographing i'm dumb um (laughs) The, the industry wow. that I'm like you know doing this kind of content for uh, is known to be very uh, cheap mm. in a sense because like you know what's what's like what's the better purchase getting a completely new costume that you know is going to look really yeah. cool in real life or paying the money to buy really high quality photography mm. both are equally as like needed for for a cosplayer because obviously they need um you know the you, they need the content for their youtube channels or for for instagram or wherever yeah. they're posting the content to but at the same time it's living the moment as well yeah yeah definitely so yeah. it's like you know you want to you want to be able to either make or purchase a really nice costume to be yeah. wearing on like that day of the event but at the same time you want things to remember it by yeah. being yeah. you know photography videography something or rather you know yeah yeah but that's, that's mm, interesting eh yeah I don't, I don't know like wage subsidies and just wages in general is a very difficult topic to like sort of discuss especially at our age it, as well yeah definitely yeah. yeah i mean i did see like a. am uh, I'm, I'm not gonna say which company but <laughs> a company a company yes a company um I, I actually talked this um with my partner recently mm. um there was a company that, that that I saw on seek.com. Oh yeah. Okay, every literally for a junior graphic designer, right? There was like it, it was like um that's like junior graphic designer that's like one two year experience. Right. Yeah. 50 60k a year. This company 85k for junior. For junior. And I was like I was really like it's a lot. At <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a lot that I hit, that I hit the pop shoot, but yes, it's That's a lot. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I guess yeah, I get what you mean. Like you do want to, it's almost like you want to read the terrain. Yeah. Right, and just like adapt to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, tough well, subject. Very tough subject. We can go on for hours with this. Honestly, yeah. But you know what? I feel like I'm just gonna ramble on for like ages and. I mean, this is again. And it's this not going to really get anywhere. No, it's not because, like, like the like the spoiler alert, um, for for next week's episode. Um, that is like I think I feel like <laughs> this conversation. It basically is like a it's like a branch of a tree where you can literally just go on to like different paths. Say honestly, yeah. And um, there's just way too many paths that you can take to like get to the right solution that is benefiting you the most. Right. Exactly. I think I think that's like the creative industry as a whole. Oh yeah. You don't see this anywhere correct me if i'm wrong you could see you don't some... see it in like a in a standard desk job like an accounting no no or... no yeah exactly i was gonna say accounting maybe even piloting like you don't even see them piloting or anything no no oh that reminds me i wanted to be a bus driver when i was <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's a conversation for another day I think. yeah that is a conversation for another day i mean come on that was fun though i mean i, I that was so fun mm. like being a bus driver come on yeah imagine me being a bus driver i'll drive i'll get people on time yeah and people will actually use public transport because yeah. i'm such a good driver <laughs> just use my partner your... my partner will contradict what <laughs> i mean just just become an uber if anything no it's actually not a bad idea for you especially i don't know yeah I don't. but uh i think let's just get on to the next topic and then yeah. we'll, we'll see where things go from yeah there. We'll, we'll go i know because you, you do want to talk about several things don't oh, you yeah 100 percent. okay well we'll go on to that one yeah We're back. Um, was there something um, previously you said you wanted to talk about something? Yeah, so... Yeah, okay. 
Okay. Hit me with it. So, I'm so ready. okay, it's more gaming stuff, right? But of course, I'm not probably, surprised. It's honestly probably stuff that you're not familiar with. Of course um, <laughs> So, uh, news came out last mm-hmm. week um, that... Uh, are you f- you're not familiar with anything Dungeons and Dragons related? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Remember the last time? Th- uh, remember the last time you said you you wanted to drag me into one? Well, I should start. We totally. It. I mean, no. That's the thing. We totally should drag you into a into a session. One day. One day. One, one day. day. One day. We'll see. But um. Anyway. So uh. Last week. Uh. A lot. Like. Pretty much the entire internet got word that um. Wizards of the Coast, the company that currently owns the Dungeons and Dra- Dungeons and Dragons uh, IP, right. um, acquired a um, what is it? Acquired a system called D and D Beyond. Uh, D and D Beyond is basically, um, well, as they put it, the premier way to play Dungeons and Dragons online. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can create your character sheets. You can create encounters. You can buy all the source books digitally and um you know you don't have to have like physical books like the one i have here um but that was for an acquisition of like 1.3 million i think which you know for for like a i would say small company yeah, yeah not really yeah. a small company but like uh, for a small acquisition as that it's a pretty big game changer um Mainly because at least the like the theories that a lot of people have been making is that um, with this acquisition, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, well, WotC as we call it, uh, is currently in the works of making a virtual tabletop, mm-hmm. uh, meaning that it allows for people to play online way easier, and it will be also you know first party a solution. Right. Um, on top of that pretty much with the acquisition is that they want to integrate D&D Beyond system into that tabletop system so that everything is pretty pretty much like, you know, it's, it's just an ever-flowing yeah. situation, yeah. right? I don't know really how to put it because my mind is going a blank. But, um, yeah, it always? everything will be like sort of one harmonious system, which yeah. then plays into how everything works. But following on from that, in terms of personal stuff that I was going to talk about, um, the reason I bring that up is because uh, we just finished our current in-person campaign for right. D&D. Uh, unfortunately, because of you know what was mentioned in the previous segment, mm-hmm. um, the I, I sort of had to miss out on my finale, uh, which thankfully my oh. character lived, which is which is nice to know. Uh, I, I made a whole letter and shit about like. Uh, I built a family. I'm rebuilding my father's old business and and stuff like that. It's it's a long story, basically. So it's like that's just typical backstories. Uh, typical epilogue, like Every one year, year later situation. Um, oh, I th- <laughs> but uh, that comes with the fact of like you know what is our uh, what what is our friend group going to now play, and mm-hmm. it now falls on me because now I'm going to be the dungeon master. And I, I've been, honestly, uh, so, so I've got the book here, um, Barbie on the Witch Light. I'm putting it to, to my camera. Um, it's, okay. yeah, go for it. Uh, pretty much this book is like, um, so if, if you don't know Dungeons and Dragons, uh, nope. the book is, it, it takes a lot of heavy um, inspiration from, uh, you know, stuff like Alice in Wonderland, where it's very high fantasy, but also very weird and whimsical and like there's just weird shit that happens in the campaign itself um the like i love the art style i know right that was amazing i love the art and it's all hand drawn as well oh that's oh it's hand paint oh yeah it's all hand done it's not like uh well i mean obviously yeah it's digital i mean definitely looks it's digital but like it's hand painted style yeah um but it looks like it yeah like the whole thing with it is that I've been prepping for like the last maybe two, three months with this book, uh, as well as all the resources I have online. And I'm sort of just like terrified of like playing because we, we start this campaign tomorrow as we're recording this. Um, we're recording oh, this today, on a Wednesday. Today Wednesday. Yes, today, today is Wednesday. Wednesday and we I, film, yeah, we usually film on a Monday. We usually film on a but Monday. It's because it's Easter and. Uh, because we yeah. had that giant one one hour long conversation yeah. with uh, with SRC Ultima. We were stressing because we couldn't find a place to put all of our camera gear. Oh my god, that was a that yeah, <laughs> that's something. That, 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 is, that, is, that is something. We can we can probably talk about it next time. Yeah, but um, 
I'm honestly really terrified to run a campaign for these guys because they are they like, good. They are insane. <laughs> Not, I mean, like it's more in the sense that, like you know, uh, these guys actually know what they're doing and they've played D and D much longer than I have actually been D- playing D and D as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm. This is. It's sort of uh, to put it simply. It's like stage fight in a sense, um, considering that I'm the one sort of, like, controlling everything and being like, oh, God, yeah, I hope yeah. this works and, like, I hope that works and whatnot. Um, but, I don't know. I feel like I've picked a really good, uh, like, campaign to really start off with with this group. I think you did. Yeah. Because, uh, to put it in perspective, um, the last two campaigns that we ran for our group, um, Baldur's Gate descended to Avernus and mm-hmm. Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden are right. two very, very, like, uh, how do I say it? They're, they're two very opposing um, campaigns, like, in terms yeah. of setting and whatnot. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, they're also two very serious campaigns as well. Mm-hmm. Um, think of it that, like, you know, one is based, well, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus is basically you descending into hell yep. uh, and trying to get the fuck out of there. Um, Icewind Dale is you're stuck in a region way up north where it's like like below zero temperatures and you're trying to like basically take out a, a deity mm. um so like the last two campaigns we've played have been super serious and now it's come to a point where like i'm the one running this next campaign and i have i'm i, I chose to play something that's a little bit more fun hopefully um I, I I'm just I just read the book. I, I have no idea. I mean, I all I all I did was look at the illustrations. So obviously, I have no idea. Oh, that, that's totally fair. I mean, like, bear in mind, it's I've, too good. It's too. Oh. I've had to read this book um back like cover to cover to like get all the information. And you've seen how much information is in there. It's how many pages? I want to see. It's about two hundred, maybe three hundred pages. I'm gonna double check. Oh shit! Yeah. Haha. <laughs> Lol. That's like. It's probably about two hundred, three hundred pages. Some of that. I'm on page 230 now. I'm not even at the end. Ah, 252. Yeah. So, like... That's a big book. <laughs> it's a big book, but it's honestly not the biggest, I, I don't think. No, I, I swear it was, like, a bigger D&D book that someone brought in once. Um, campus, wasn't it? Didn't, didn't someone bring it in once? I don't I think, remember. I think so. I don't I remember. I remember someone going, Yeet. I'm like... Oh, my God, that's a book. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like it may have been one of the like core rule books. I'm not sure. Or Busi Huan books. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, like it's. I've always had this issue about like stage fright. I, I will say, like I, I used to dance for like what ten years, I think. And you, yeah, and you have stage fright. Yeah, like I had a, I, mean, I had a yeah. lot of stage fright. So wait, wait hang on. So wait, so do you mean when you were dancing for those ten years, mm. did you get stage fright? A lot. Like, especially for, like, end of year showcases and stuff like that. Oh, I that used to be, get... That would be terrifying. Yeah. This that was in front of parents and, like... Uh, I'm not hate... really new... Like, not really people who are scouting, like, students out from uh, from the academy that I was dancing in. But, like, just just the whole idea of stage fright. Like, I've... At high school, especially, I've always wanted to uh, do, like, the musicals and the plays yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But oh, I want to do that, too. Like, the thing is, is that I... I feel like, as of now, looking back at it, it's like, I don't think I had the right mindset mm. going into those sorts of things. Where, like, you know, I I had the I had the vocal skills, like, I was able to, you know, do, you know, whatever performing I did really well. Yeah. But the issue is just that stage fright. Yeah. That stage fright really was just the worst thing about it. Like, no, fair enough. I mean, I danced... I could, I can sing, uh, technically I can, oh, well, I mean, like, I, I can dance, but it's not like, you know, uh, the kind of choreography that you see on stage for, like, musicals and stuff. Um, and I could also play instruments as well. Mm. So I could have been in a band, but overall, it's just the, the stage fight really, you know, impacted a lot of what I could do. I can't sing, I can't dance. Yeah. So that's not me. <laughs> that you can't play in- instruments either? I. That's funny. I, I used to be able to play when I was very young. I was able to play, I'm not trying to flex anything here, but I used to be able to, I used to be able to play the drums, guitar, 
drums I still kind of can because I did in year 12 or year 13 I think um piano other 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 instruments other like, instruments and, and, and instrument. I, but I feel like that, those were the core but um I think I basically give, gave up every single one of them because I had to do homework. Right, yeah. And I, just, I was just like, fuck this shit. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just gonna learn how to play Happy Birthday. I, I don't even know how to play again, Happy it's, Birthday on a Again, this anymore. is like getting into one of those really tough subjects of like, you know, uh, not to... I mean, you, we are both Asian descent or Asian, yep. right? And I, it's I, like... I, I, I kind of see where this is going. It's like that mentality of just like, you yeah. know, trying to be the, the number one right exactly one specific thing uh or like you know whatever like thankfully thankfully my parents were very lenient when it came to my childhood like uh say the same they could have they could have honestly put me in like piano class which they did but they realized i was absolutely terrible at piano so they took me out straight away but luckily over the over the time of like you know primary school and high uh primary school intermediate and high school right or primary uh middle school high school I should say, just yeah, to yeah. you know, put it out there. Um, I learned drums, trumpet, uh, euphonium. I think I, I learned a bit of euphonium. What's that? Uh, it's like a it's like a mini tuba. How do you spell it? Euphonium. E U P H O I O I M. Euphonium. I might be wrong. Oh. Oh, that! So oh, it's like a tiny tuba. E u p h o n i u m. Yeah, it. That's not. Oh, is it like those? It's, it's kind of like no. It's not bar, like bar, bar, it's not like so huge where like the the opening for like the, the you know the euphonium like is like trom- above your head. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like it's big enough that you still have to carry it like a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I learned like uh, all that. I'm drums. really jealous of like people who can still like play instruments. Yeah, I wish I, I, wish I concentrated more in piano class. Honestly, <laughs> um, I'm like sort of the same, but I'm more or less like I wish I learned how to play like guitar. I think, but my hand-eye coordination is not good enough to play guitar. I think if you can play the piano, you can literally play any instrument. I thought, I thought, like I, I've heard this once from a music teacher. Like, um, if you know how to play the piano, you can basically teach yourself to play every other every instrument because piano, piano, piano yeah is the hardest piano is the hardest but it's also the like sort of quintessential like uh, right. instrument to like exactly. for everything because you need to learn so much theory with uh, I hate theory with so much. piano like you know your scales your yeah. um like the different ways that you know the different ways of playing a piano in a way yeah, exactly yeah, like yeah, yeah um are you familiar with the youtuber chris cornell I think I've heard of. I think I've heard. I don't know. I don't know. He's a so he's a professional musician coming out of I think uh, it's like one of the popular states in America. No, nope, never. One heard of the more popular states of America. But uh, the the sort of content he does on YouTube is like um, in music analysis, uh, coming from a more professional. Did you die? I don't know. I think so. Maybe my camera's still rolling, so that's fine. How the fuck is that? Nah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, the content that he puts out is like um you know musical analysis based off like his personal like uh education because hmm. he i think he learned how to do well how to play jazz i think so like a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff that he talks about is like very interesting to at least me i don't know about you if you've ever watched him or if you will ever watch him uh, but I don't know. um yeah it's like just hearing the stuff that he talks about is like really interesting because he'll like you know he'll go into this uh it, you know he'll go into watching like a movie right mm. and it's like uh take for example uh, disney and pixar's uh soul right which is all based around like yeah. jazz music yeah right oh god the animation was that was really was like pretty good i had a good solid cry on that movie oh you did yeah it was that uh, good i only watched um <laughs> a small bit yeah, I only watched the beginning because, like, I've, I've watched a YouTube video of like how how the animation was really good, so I just watched that first. Part. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> That's all I watched. Yeah, but um, I watched that the whole way through, and it was oh so good, so good. Um, I prefer. Oh, I mean, I can't say I prefer Encanto, but oh, I, I mean, prefer Encanto. Yeah, I mean, even though I Encanto is a newer movie, though, so I mean, it, like, it, it doesn't really well, compare. Yeah, it it kind of came out the same around nah. the same. They're not. Oh, no, nah. I thought it. Did. Uh, it came out in like twenty twenty, I think. Or, well, I mean, wait, no, Encanto. Soul. 
Oh, Soul. Soul came out, I think, in 2020. Oh. Because Encanto came out last year or the year before. So, like, 2021. Yeah, it came out last year, yes. Yeah. So... Oh, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I just prefer, like... No, I, I guess, like... No, no, no. It's just because I, I didn't watch, like... So, I guess Encanto intrigued me more, mm. I guess. But, no, it was a really good movie because, like, it was... Both had really good storylines and stuff yeah. like that. The music um, was really good. I don't know. I don't know if we've mentioned this in the last episode or not, but... um. I'll recently recently i watched turning red uh oh no you didn't know we know we didn't because when we, we didn't no because like we filmed that over a month ago oh perfect it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't even released <laughs> but gosh it was so cute it was honestly um honestly it was such a good movie it was such a good movie honestly and like oh. it like i guess for me it related on so many like so many personal angles as well right. like the whole Being you know asian well that but also like um you know just having having parents that are like proud of you and and you know actually having some appreciation in your family life and whatnot like Gosh, that, that really that really hit hard for me yeah. because i just like even though i had it pretty easy when i was younger i didn't get any of that i didn't get right. any sort of appreciation exactly. and whatnot exactly it was like not to like, like how can you this is like it's not like a, you got like a, like i don't know you got an a in a test and it's not like oh good job it's like do better yeah, A's not enough. A plus. A, yeah, exactly. If, if, you have to get A plus. If, if it's not, if it's not A, if it, if it's A, you have to get A plus. If it's yeah. A plus, you have to get a hundred percent. Yeah, it's like it's like not to okay. not to call out my parents or anything, but oh, like no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. But it's it's like when I was you know able to at least fend for myself to an extent. Like obviously, I was still being taken care of my late grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- they were just. Like, they would not bother trying to help me at all with anything, um, which sort of led me down to the path that I am at now. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, like, there is some sort of appreciation, but also, like, you know, you could have made me do better and I could have become, a, you know, a son that you might have probably appreciated more. Yeah. Do you, do you watch uh, Ronnie Cheng's... Um... No, I haven't actually. He he, he actually mentions this quite. It, it was uh, um, if you haven't watched it, please please watch it. I do recommend it. Um, it, it's a Ronnie Chang's um comedy special. Was it? Comedy special, yeah, right. on, on Netflix. And then he mentioned something about like how Asian parents always want their doctor uh, or the, want their doctors. Fuck. Always want their kids to, to be like doctors, be doctors right? or engineers or something like exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then um, <laughs> he said he, he oh. It's, it's, it's a joke obviously so he mentioned it as a joke that yeah. they, they want it it's because of, of the prestige and the money yeah but which, the, the weird thing that makes, like which I think makes yeah sense. the weird sort of philosophy that I've like sort of come up with now uh, where I am at the moment is like it's good to have doctors and engineers and stuff like in you know in life yeah but they're slowly going to become the oh, pretty much the least popular jobs uh, like in the near future because mm. now we're starting to create more creative opportunities for, for people like you know content creation and uh, you know like all these other like creative avenues that you know allow Do for the thing is a too much though the like just the, the whole con- the whole influencer content creation thing is do you think sometimes think it's a no are... not at all not really? at all yeah because it's that, just no it's getting, getting, getting to a point where everyone wants to do that that no one else wants to become an engineer or a doctor or like I- imagine like how labor you know like the like the trady sector i don't know i don't know i'm, I'm not saying that it is i'm just saying is that is that something i uh, i think you... it's honestly i think that's just a that's just like in my opinion it's like human evolution in a sense mm-hmm. like with we're sort of in a stage where like TV is in the most popular form of media with our generation. Yeah. And so what's the next next best outlet for us? And that is the internet. The internet is where obviously you get people who are making, you know, videos on YouTube constantly, Twitch streaming or streaming in general on whatever social media platform. TikTok obviously has been a big, uh, like a big rise in the mm-hmm. in the last couple of years especially mm-hmm. because um you know with the whole thing about vine in what 2015 to 17 something yeah. like that yeah. i don't i don't remember what which year it was but that whole short length video idea has really spun into a uh, an interesting genre because now well i mean tiktok was originally like 
also really short videos because yeah, it was yeah. an acquisition of Musical.ly back yeah. in the day. But um, but what is it? Now you can actually film up, think, up to three minutes of video on TikTok for really? like one standard video. Yeah. Wasn't it like 15 seconds back then? Exactly. That's the thing. And like the still 15 seconds is still great and all. But uh, at the same time, it's kind of just like, you know, people are longing for more content, even though their attention spans are slowly starting to decline. Yeah. So it's like these sorts of social media platforms as well as like, you know, Twitch, YouTube, whatever, are really just hitting it big, especially. Yeah. Like, I mean, um, not to not to be controversial or anything, even like NFTs are sort of the same sense. Where yeah. I know sensitive subjects and all, but the the idea of like uh, you're getting this really quick hit of dopamine yeah, uh, yeah. from you know buying a really cool piece of artwork. Like I wouldn't say cool, but yeah. <laughs> well, no, that depends because like uh, you sure like how the system of people like how people are actually creating NFTs nowadays. Uh, I don't like NFTs, but I will say this: I don't like NFTs for yeah. sure. Like I don't support that at all. But hundred percent. Yeah, but I think NFTs are really good. It's like it's created by people who have like a lot of money, and they're really good as as you said, they're really good at hitting people short dopamine. Because yeah, I think uh, it was actually quite an interesting topic because like it's either like, do you want to sit down? So if you if you get if you got half an hour, mm. do you wanna do you wanna watch like one YouTube video that is like half an hour long or watch i don't know 100 tiktoks that are like exactly 15 seconds you each, can right? aim like you can aimlessly scroll through tiktok and then it'll be like four o'clock in the morning right exactly and yeah. you're like holy fuck where did the, where did right. the time go <laughs> Here, here's the thing though right um it could, i mean now this is sort of turned into a into an nft discussion in a sense um that's so funny the so like because i i love the the concept of an nft right a non-fungible token mm -hmm. but the business model that people are using nowadays is kind of just not the vibe. I think that's why a lot of people are really hating on NFTs. Like, for example, this is the only... So this is currently the only quote-unquote NFT that I have. And it's the um, 2021 championship chain from 100 Thieves, right? This was not... Technically, it's an NFT, but it's actually more considered a digital collectible because mm. there's n no funds are being used to purchase it and the company itself is not actually getting anything out of it it's okay. just something that they released for free for anybody to acquire um and like you know it would be a really dumb decision for somebody to be trading it on open sea or something like yeah, that yeah but yeah but i get what you mean honestly like looking at the looking at it now on open sea it's only going for literally ethereum gas uh, gas prices so like i don't know two dollars maybe and that's cheap that's really cheap but yeah. like also it's a really dumb decision for somebody to be doing it yeah exactly yeah but the basically the reason why they released it was um they wanted the community to have that same feeling of like you know the players getting the chain because the chain is a real thing like yeah, every yeah. player in hundred thieves has one of those chains yeah um and they wanted the community to feel that same sort of appreciation mm. uh and especially for the league of legends team that won the uh, LCS championship uh, yeah. last year, um, this is a big significant milestone. Um, so, you know, having something like this is cool. And like I said, I love the idea of having digital collectibles like this. Yeah. But I don't like the business model currently for NFTs. Yeah. Because no, no, no. how it, it's like, it's like hype, essentially. Yeah, pretty um, much. Like, I don't know if you, if any of the cameras can see, but I'm wearing a pair of dunks. Right. Are you? Well, yeah, these are Nike Dunks. Oh. Right. Oh, is that what they're called? Yeah. That's the oh, thing. Okay. And I'm wearing good old Converse. Converse, which is with feeler my... socks. <laughs> yeah, because why not? Yeah. My it, soul is. Ooh, I don't it's, know it's, sure. it's wearing out. Um, yeah, like, there's honestly so much hype around these shoes, especially because yeah. of, you know, the significance of mm. uh, Kentucky University and, and whatnot. Because it's, it's it's considered the Kentucky blue colorway, right? Um, hell, I've even I've even walked around like the city, Newmarket, uh, Sylvia Park at some points with these shoes, and I've had literal children walk up to me and be like, "Yo, can I buy your shoes?" 
Like, <laughs> can I buy the shoes that you're wearing on your feet right now? And it's like, seriously? No. <laughs> no. Jeez. Like, people, people are willing to go out of their way to purchase the shoes off somebody's feet because it's that hype. It, it makes, like, honestly, that makes no sense to me. And, like, my response every single time when somebody does that to me is I literally look at them in the eye. <laughs> like, I look at them eye to eye, and then I look down at my shoes, and I crease them. Because I know how much that will hurt them. <laughs> oh, no. I know how much that's going that would hurt them. Oh, God. And, like... <laughs> No, I, no. I like I, I can't I can't really say too much because obviously yeah, I'm yeah, also no. buying into the hype yeah, but yeah. I'm doing it legitimately right these shoes as well as a bunch of the other shoes in my collection are bought at retail price yeah. I have not bought a single shoe since you know the one pair that I did try to yeah. buy for resale well, technically it's an investment at that right in a sense but like yeah. you can't really consider it an investment we're running out of time uh, I don't know. I don't what, know. What's that sound? Is that your camera? No, it's coming from a... Oh. Oh, la the mama, timer. That's the ca That's the timer. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, what the fuck is that noise coming from? I thought there was something wrong with my microphone. That's so like... funny. Anyway. Um... Yeah, go. <laughs> that's so yeah. good. That's gold. Okay, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you can't really call it an investment because like... In my case, especially, I'm wearing these shoes out. I'm yeah. wearing them until they, like, are absolutely destroyed. Like, there's, there is a, sh a pair of shoes that I would wear often. Like, you probably have seen them. They're, like, they're really chunky. Doc Martens? No, not the Doc Martens, but they... Uh, they that's a surprise. They're, like, grey, like, <laughs> chunky dad shoe looking. You have to bring it in one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably day. wear it at some point, I'll, and bring I'll show you. Next Tuesday. But, we're gonna go. We're gonna go out for lunch anyway. That is if I'm if I'm available. I don't know. Oh right, yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Um, the thing is, is that if I took off one of the shoes, you could see that there's a full on like rip in the fabric. That's that's how much I've worn that shoe. Jesus. Like the like it's it's worn to a point where I've actually ripped the fabric on the inside of the shoe. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's and like yeah, sure, it diminishes the value of the shoe itself because I bought it yeah. for like an, an extremely. Uh, hefty price. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm actually enjoying the shoe for what it is, mm. not as a collector's item. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how this is derailed to this point, but like going back to, I guess NFTs, it's like the same sort of thing. I, yeah, yeah. If yeah. I were to purchase a NFT, whatever the price is, right? I want to purchase an NFT that I will genuinely enjoy and keep. Not fair enough. You know, enough. not buy it to then resell later yeah, down the line yeah. i want to actually have something that i am willing to cherish and like keep in my possession as sort of like a family heirloom in a sense and like that's a, that's that's one way to look at it yeah I guess. <laughs> and it's like once you know once i do eventually pass away and like my children or my or my forebearers decide to you know that is very future thinking right it's like <laughs> when when my children or like my my future forebearers then acquired this collection of artwork quote unquote <laughs> artwork artwork yeah. i'll call it art then <laughs> they can choose to do whatever they want but yeah yeah to, like for my mind uh, for my peace of mind, I would consider them as a family heirloom. Mm. Same thing with like, you know, again, going back to like the D&D books, um, I do purchase both digital as well as uh, like physical copies of the books. And that's because, uh, for one, I do like having notes digitally and physically. Yeah. But at the same time, I also love to just like, you know, sit down every so often, absolutely nothing on in the background and just like read a book. Yeah, fair enough. But at the same time, I'm not one to do like you know Harry Potter, like full, like chunky That's ass. That's true. Yeah, book. no, no, those Harry Potter books are in fucking insane. But like, I mean, detail. So like, yeah, exactly, you know. exactly. Actually, you know what? Speaking of like collectibles, um, because I because you since you mentioned it, mm. um, you know what is an investment? Funko Pops. Okay. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. no. Um. I have it I have I, I don't have the thing with me but it um apparently when you buy the deluxe edition of the Lego Star Wars which I have been playing oh. and, I, and I really do love it the UI can do a bit of tweaking like it's I feel like there's a lot of 
there's too much happening on the screen. Yeah. But um, but I feel like that's what happens when you try to jam everything. So I feel like that could have been done better. But overall, I think it's a really, you know, graphics yeah. wise, it, it looks like a really good, it's a graphically beautifully looking game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sense. But um, the, like, you know, I'll, just, I'll yeah. bring it out. While, while we're at it though, my yeah. camera has like run out of space. But that's fine. We've still got, we've still got a main camera rolling. So that's, that's totally exactly, fine. Exactly, exactly. It's not like we're over talking anything. Ah, uh, yes. Now he brings out the OLED switch. <laughs> because this is my baby. But I mean, like, oh, uh, I don't want to. Okay, well that loads. <laughs> <laughs> I must have closed the software last night or the night before. Well, um, <laughs> and there goes our on, on, on other camera. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, I mean. I mean, it looks, it looks good. good. It looks good, right? It looks, it looks good. It looks really good. I mean, I've seen I've seen the gameplay of it, and like, it, it looks it, really good. It, no, it looks really good. And um, oh, actually, we're gonna have no heart on the episode soon. Oh and, really? Oh, well, hopefully, I would like to. I oh mean, yeah. He has the new Steam Deck. I want to see. Oh that, yeah, I'll, we we need to do that comparison. Yeah, I want to see what that's all about. We really I've, need I've to do that comparison of it already. Yeah. And I want to I want to actually because I know like a lot of people say it's. A lot e easier to hold because, mm. like, you've got the thing on the back where this one you obviously yeah. don't. Um, but then everyone say it's obviously a lot bigger than the Switch. Mm. So a, a lot bigger. I mean, like, yeah. think about how much That's internals that they would probably have in the in the uh, the Steam Deck. Right. Exactly. And um, no, but oh, I'm going so off the big mole. That's, um, fine. That's fine. Uh, but the, the actual investment is that apparently, like, because when I bought it from EB Games, yeah, uh, the person over the counter said. The the Lego minifigure of a uh, Luke Sky a uh, Skywalker with the milk, mm -hmm. um, with the blue milk. Apparently, that that itself is being sold over a hundred dollars. Oh yeah, 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 no, I've I've seen that. Yeah, I so I'm gonna keep that shit. Well, I mean, considering <laughs> considering how well, I mean, like yeah, Lego is expensive for one, but Lego like is actually an investment at it this is, point. It is an I'm investment at this kidding. point, but like. Knowing that Lego has now become synonymous as being another one of those like hyped collector's items now because of obviously you know all the lockdowns and uh, the thing that shall, we oh, shall yeah. not name yeah. further, um, it's like you know it, it's uh, it's it's just again another um, thing of hype. I'm gonna ask so uh, I'm gonna ask uh, your partner. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was like I was like, I was gonna I, I was gonna ask like. I was gonna say something about sofas for some reason. Sofas? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I'm gonna ask my partner um, if we could buy the the Lego Star Wars. Oh my god! Lego kit. Oh my god! I'm gonna, I'm gonna kit. I'm gonna. I I know. I, I remember last time we were gonna buy one, but it was like it was either that or like <laughs> not Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. Not not playing into the okay. not playing into the hype or anything, but it has no, no, to no, be no. it has to be either Death Star or Millennium Falcon. Yeah. It has well, to be. I, it has well, to be I, either one. I was one thinking of, them. of the Star Destroyer. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, and, the, and the only reason why we want to buy it was because um, it would be a good time building it with each other. Yeah, right. It was you because you're a little lovey dovey couple. <laughs> shut up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it was yeah, like um, what was it like? Uh, Oh man, you lost my train of. Oh no, yeah, it, it, we. I never actually thought of it as an investment. Oh yeah. But then after, like a few weeks later, after that, we've been to the Lego store. Um, I, I read on the news that Lego stuff were being uh, um were actually investments. I was like, <laughs> I think we should go back and buy it. Now the, <laughs> so I'm gonna. My okay. Here's my question to you, and I guess question mm -hmm. to our viewers as well. Mm -hmm. When you do buy Lego sets, do you? Build them like, right away. No, do you build them so that you can destroy them later on down the line? Or do you build them with the intent of keeping them in its current shape? Well, me personally, I built well oh what I did when me when when my brother and I were when we were younger, we would build the Legos the Lego sets and we would literally have Lego fight, Lego battles. We right. actually made a stop motion animation of, of animation that of, i mean like come on come i mean on. how could you not yeah exactly how could you not and then i like i i drew i remember doing open up on the program because th this was a software that we used in uh, year seven and like a video editing software sort of it, it was situation like animation software oh so, okay yeah you i literally used my phone yeah or my laptop which was the old something. MacBook Pro, like a really old MacBook pro <laughs> even um, when you were younger you were still using macbooks yeah no, okay no, that's no it's funny 
We had to buy MacBook Pros. We had to. That was like the school <laughs> requirement. I'm not even joking. You're serious. Oh my god. I'm not I'm not even joking. That's Hong Kong for you. That's my school in Hong Kong for you. Right. We had okay. To, we we couldn't even buy the MacBook Air. You cause you know why? They were like, Oh, if you buy the MacBook MacBook Air, we won't know how to fix it. Bitch. It's what? the same comp <laughs> it's not that hard. The MacBook Airs are supposed to be easier, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, they were like, Oh, you have to buy the MacBook Pro. You can't buy the MacBook Air. Yeah. Otherwise we won't you won't be covered by the the free by the free um like warranty situation. Well not the warranty. You can go servicing. App. Servicing, yeah. Right. If you wanted to go if you want to do it free, you have to do it free at school. Okay. You have to do it you have to buy the MacBook Pro. Otherwise if you buy the MacBook Air, they will just send you straight to an Apple store. Oh wow. And then 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 goodbye. You 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 go get a fix with Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then that so I'm like, getting a fix with Apple without Apple Care is like really expensive as well. So I like, mean if you got if you get Apple Care it should be should oh, yeah, be, yeah, yeah, should yeah. be all right. But like yeah, but then obviously who you, no, and it's even funnier. You we didn't buy it from an Apple store. We bought it from a, a like a, a third party a, store. A third party store that was all it was an authorized, authorized dealer? Yeah. Damn. Okay. So it was like, so you can buy Apple's warranty on top of their warranty to get extra warranty, like to get a oh to get a longer warranty. Yeah. Eventually, when we were when when all of us grew older, we used that software that we used that third party a lot less because we were just like, fuck it, we'll just get it from Apple. Yeah. It's just so much easier and so much less hassle. And if you get Apple Care, you're basically covered for three years. So like mm. that you're good enough. Interesting. So yeah, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. But yeah, that's so that's where we um we made the little stop motion animation and I drew all of the like the lasers. It was so much fun. Yeah. But uh, back to the, the whole switch situation. Um yeah, yeah I would I honestly I would love to do a sort of like compare and contrast with um with on, this the OLED switch as well as the uh the Steam Deck. Look at this. This is like I love how they did the animation. It looks so this. much better, right? It looks so good. Cause like, what was the previous game that they're using? Like, because they're using the same uh, game engine for like their more recent games, eh? Essentially, I, I think so. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I, I watched a video, but I completely forgot. I yeah. think they used Unity. Unity? I feel I like think... it's Unity. Um, but that man, they did a like a they did a little f uh, throwback to like the Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga. Oh yeah. Wow, that was actually nostalgic for me. Hmm. I was like, I because re I remember playing that. And I was like, holy yeah, I don't remember crap. the last time I played uh, the complete saga. I think I did oh, play no, it at some point. It, it was like PS three era. Oh yeah, I think so. Oh, was it PS PS two or PS three? Yeah, something like that. I don't yeah. remember, but yeah, it was a lot. No, probably PS three because the PS four came out in twenty thirteen. Yeah, so it was definitely PS three era. It was probably so. PS three yeah. but, man, but was... um. Yeah, no, like, I, I would love to do a compare and contrast with the, the Steam Deck yes, once No Hard gets too. it. Yes, I want to see what game he has. So. Although, what I will say is my point still stands. Uh, I would not buy uh, a Steam Deck. I won't buy a Steam Deck. Purely no. based on the, the question of, will I be... Compatibility? No, not compatibility. Will I be able to play multiplayer games with a data... Uh, with, like, a, a, you know, an eSIM? True. Yeah. Because my, my, my initial thought process with you know, potentially getting a Steam Deck. Potentially. Yeah. Would have been... Because I, I, I'm an avid player of Destiny. If you look right. at my Steam profile, I have over a thousand hours in Destiny 2. Right? Yeah. And the one thing I really want to do with a Steam Deck, once it becomes, you know, properly available, which is now, is play Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck uh, whilst out in public yeah. and on a, you know, a mobile data plan. Yeah. Right, and be in a in like a, a PvP lobby, like just playing to my heart's content on the train, for example. Yeah. But two issues arise. One, they don't allow for uh, you know data plans to really be added onto a Steam Deck, so you have to hotspot, Fair which enough. sucks for yeah. one. Well, that's gonna that's gonna drive up your data plan. It is a lot. And considering that my my current phone plan is yeah. unlimited text, unlimited calls, unlimited text and calls to Australia as well. Oh yeah, that's and it. unlimited data, but I'm not allowed a hotspot. Right, oh, that's a that's a funny thing with New Zealand. Yeah, so like, it, it would mean that I would have to get a completely separate data plan to yeah, just then be able to use the, yeah. like my pretty much anything except my phone. Yeah, I right. heard that the 
that quite a few games are not yet available. Like more games are being available, like being very exactly. for Steam OS, yeah, right? Exactly. And that was that was point two. Destiny two is not compatible with the Steam Deck yet. <sighs> That's why I like to buy the Nintendo Switch because everything you buy from Nintendo is going to be compatible. It's going to be working. Exactly. First. You're you're basically buying like here's my thought process, right? You're buying the Nintendo Switch for the for its IP. Because it has exclusive IP that's only available for Nintendo. Right, exactly. And you've got Hogwarts Legacy is fucking coming to Nintendo Switch. That which is surprising. The, which is so surprising. I never thought Hogwarts Hogwarts Legacy is a trailer it looks, game. It looks like it's going to be a lot. As in, like, Sorry? graphically. It looks yeah. like it's going to be a lot. It looks Have like, you seen the gameplay trailer? Yeah, I think it's like Unity... No, it looks like it's like Unreal, like latest Unreal Four or no, they, Unreal they, they Five. Use, I thought they used Unreal Five for exactly. That. That's what I'm thinking. It, so because I can tell by the post processing, it looks like is it. this gonna run Hogwarts Legacy? I don't think so. I mean, they would have to do some serious downscaling. Yeah, no, that's what they normally do for for like Which, that sort of that point, I mean. I like the idea. I, I like the idea of being able to play Hogwarts Legacy on the go. I am so excited for that game. But if it's gonna look graphically like a lot worse, then is I there? I don't think it's worth it because like you might as you're well better be... off buying it on a console or right, on PC. Exactly. Uh, so hopefully I can get a yeah. PS Five soon. So yeah, like I was like I was saying, you're buying a Nintendo Switch and basically anything from Nintendo for its IP. Yeah. Same thing with like buying Apple products. You're buying. You're basically buying Apple products for the sleek and compact design, but also IP as yeah. well. Mac because OS. You can't get Mac OS anywhere else. Unless you uh unless you like jack it and put it onto a Windows system. As like a Which um, no one really does to be honest. No, I have heard some people do like a virtual uh, a oh, virtual really? computer via Windows just OS or Linux at least. I mean I'm a Mac guy, so just get a Mac people. Just yeah. get a Mac. And I mean I'm a I'm impartial, but I'm mainly a PC guy. Yeah. Right. Um Oh yeah, my brother just got a PC. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> but with that being said, you're buying a Steam Deck to get access to playing uh, your Steam library on the go. Yeah. So my only issue with it is that the fact that you can't add a SIM to allow for a data plan to be added on to your uh, to to that device really limits what you can really do. Yeah. Because it's not like the Switch where the IP stands for itself and like you'd be a hundred percent happy. To be playing like you know legend of zelda or metroid or something on the go um but with a steam deck you're basically <laughs> to put it like in the most blatant like comparison ever you're buying it for like skyrim yeah yeah to play on the go but the thing is, is that you can play skyrim on a nintendo switch that's so funny or you could play on, or you could play skyrim is it on your phone i thought i, thought, I, I remember when it first came out people were like questioning it that's the thing it's been out for so long that it's become good. Oh, really? It's actually been good on the Nintendo Switch. They like fully optimized it for the Switch. Well, uh, to to as much as it possibly can be optimized. It, it's the same like thing. It. It's the same thing with all the Beth uh, Bethesda titles. So, like yeah, the yeah. same thing with Fallout Four as well. Like it's been optimized as much as it possibly can yeah. be so that it runs smoothly on a Nintendo Switch. But you're better off buying it again on a PC that can actually handle the frames as well as handle mods, which is yeah. what makes skyrim really fun yeah is pretty much the absurd mods for things I guess, yeah, like yeah. there was a video that came out like a couple years back and it was basically some guy modded the dragons in skyrim so that they're thomas the tank engine <laughs> and that got, a, that got a lot of views and a lot of downloads as well it's so it's so dumb when you think about it but like it's it's just like that's just the Skyrim community. They they do these sorts of things because they find it fun, and the fact that Skyrim is pretty much an open engine when you really think about it, it yeah. allows for yeah. these third party creators on Steam, especially, to create stuff that they want to see in the game, but also really dumb, stupid stuff that they Fucking also want to see in the game. Eh? What the hell? Oh my god! Okay, it's really dumb, but it's yeah, really sure. funny at the same time. So like that sort of the that's all the vibe I get with. The ten well with the, with the Steam Deck is like, you know, you're you're basically buying it so that you have access to your Steam library, not even on the go, probably more or less in and around your house without yeah. accessing your PC. Yeah. But the thing is, is that why buy a Steam Deck when you can just access your PC? 
Exactly, exactly. Because it's basically the same price yeah. as as a as a PC. It's, it's like about thousand dollars, which would give you a pretty solid PC. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Last thing I want to do, by the way, I'm just gonna do this on camera before we quickly go, because it's nearly time. Yeah. Hang on. This is this is gonna be the best thing. Hang on. Oh, are you having a nice walk? Are you having a nice walk? Should have. Bam 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 Yeah Okay now I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that but <laughs> Yeah okay. Okay. Well I think that's it. That's honestly that's pretty much it. I mean I like think, oh, I think that that was a good segment to end it off. Yeah that that, that me killing off a, 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 a perfectly innocent citizen. <laughs> it's, it became GTA five. Well an instant. Again, like that that's the that's sort of the same comparison. Yeah. But um I, I wanna like I guess the question I want to pose to to the viewers in terms of that whole mini discussion that sort of derailed from what I initially was wanting to talk about was what do you guys prefer? Do you prefer buying a Nintendo Switch or a Steam Deck? And yeah, let us know in the comments know. what let your what your opinions would be uh, for for that whole yeah, I'll be, I'll be asking situation. Around too, and then then we can like compare notes. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see if like you know based off what we know now of with the Steam Deck like whether people still think it's actually worth purchasing yeah yeah well we'll leave it off for next time um next time you see us we'll we will be doing that interview uh which is pre-recorded but um yeah should be again, right. edit yeah gosh it's a lot, lot of editing a lot, lot of editing. editing but fucking like how many cameras one two three and then two from them so five five, five cameras five cameras that's yeah. gonna be interesting that's gonna be really but interesting. you know what i believe in myself <laughs> i, I believe it. in the power yeah. of god <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll just well, we can just leave it in there yeah well, until next time um we are changing our thing to fortnightly now so you'll see us a lot more often yeah um the special edition interview is coming out next week hopefully yeah um so yeah we'll see you then yeah thank, thank you so much for uh listening watching uh you'll find this podcast pretty much on youtube as well as spotify apple uh apple Podcasts, yeah. and uh anywhere else as i know decides to put it on yeah i'll i'll, <laughs> I'll put it somewhere 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 over the rainbow so people can just find it yeah cool <laughs> yeah. um and also special thanks to media design school in auckland for uh, providing us the space that we're using right now the number one design uh design school in all of uh, asia and pacific and um sort of flex there, but yeah sort of flex but you, you know like, yeah, you, you gotta shout them out right. this is a good time all right we'll see yeah. you later sweet bye bye It's still recording, Jesus. It's still recording? Let's go. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, let's... Imagine if you had three We'll catch you next time. Signing off. Or signing off as much as we can. Yeah. Okay, and... Uh...